Table saw dado sets are pretty awesome. You can use them for all sorts of joinery tasks. A while back we made a tutorial about what to look for in a good dado set. We also recently made a video that compares routers and table saws for cutting dados and grooves. If you'd like to see either of those videos, I'll put links below this one so you can check them out. I'll also link to my dado set of choice, which is a good one, because there is nothing worse than a crappy dado set. Today we're going to talk about how to set up a dado on your table saw. And before you say I already know how to do that, I recommend you watch the video because we'll discuss a couple different ways to set your dado set's thickness, and I'll be giving you some tips that you may never have heard before. Believe me, this will be worth a few minutes of your time. The first thing most folks do is they just get out the chart that came with their set. If you bought a good quality set, this chart may be reliable, as long as the thickness of your stock matches one of the setups on the chart. Unfortunately, wood is never exactly three quarter inch thick or whatever nominal size you thought you bought because it swells and it shrinks with changes in humidity and plywood thickness varies by manufacturer. You may not even have a chart with your set, so let's just set that aside. Here's one of the fastest ways to set up the thickness of your dado set. You need a flat surface. The top of your saw is flat, but be careful. If you set a blade down too hard on the cast iron, you could chip the corner of a tooth. If you have a good flat piece of plywood or MDF, use that instead. First, nest your two outer blades together. They have to go a certain way. Usually the print on the saw plate tells you to put those printed faces outward, facing away from each other. That'll orient the teeth with the points on the outside of the dado set, cutting along the edges of the kerf. Lay the two blades on your flat surface next to a scrap of material that you're working with. Then add some chippers on top. Press down on the center of the stack with one hand, and with the tooth against the edge of your scrap material, which you also are pressing down with the other hand, Feel for the difference in height. If the difference is significant, you may add, remove, or swap out a chipper for a thinner one. Or if it's just a little bit, you may put one or two shims beneath the upper chipper of the stack. You don't want the tooth to be perfectly even with your workpiece. You want it just slightly higher, just enough to barely catch a small piece of wood as you drag it across the top. This will give you some room for glue inside the dado after it's cut. Over time, you'll learn the feel of the perfect setup. But for now, just install it and make a test cut. As you install the dado set's components, keep some things in mind. First, remember to orient the inner and outer blades properly as we discussed. As you install the chippers, stagger the teeth so no two are touching each other. Otherwise, you may squeeze things together and break one of them. A lot of dado sets come with metal or plastic shims. These tend to drop down between the threads on the table saw's arbor, and when you tighten the nut, it deforms the hole at the center of the shim. This ruins the shim's precise thickness. I greatly prefer magnetic shims because they won't drop down and deform, and they're easy to install and swap because they stick to the outer blade. I'll link to the shims I use below. Another option is to put a couple drops of light machine oil on your plastic or metal shims, Rub it around a little bit, and that will make them stick to the metal saw blade long enough to get everything on the arbor and tighten down so they won't drop into the threads. It is a little messy though, you have to wipe it off with a paper towel and be careful not to get any of it on the top of your saw where it may transfer to your workpiece. If you're cutting a wide dado, you may not have a lot of room left on the arbor for both the nut and the outer washer. It is safe to leave that washer off and just put on the nut. Use the washer if you can, but if you can't, that's okay and do not attempt to cut a dado with the throat plate removed. Put in a homemade insert if you must, but keep it covered. If you've done this a few times, your test cut will come out fitting perfectly. If not, you can add or remove shims to dial it in. If your test dado is wider than it should be, you may test different shims by just slipping them into the gap. Now let me show you another way to do this that takes advantage of a little bit of technology. This is a digital caliper. I'll link to the ones I prefer below this video. I use it to measure the precise thickness of my workpiece, then I use the depth gauge on the other end, which I place on the point of one of the teeth, to measure the thickness of the dado stack as it lies on top of my flat surface. I always add a few thousandths for glue. This will usually give me a perfect setup without fine tuning, but I always still make a test cut. While I have a caliper handy, let's talk about that chart again. If you don't have one, you can make one. Start by measuring the precise thickness of the teeth when your two outer blades are nested together. That's the minimum dado width that you can cut, and it's the baseline for all dado measurements. Now measure the chippers, but don't measure the teeth this time. Just the flat plates, because the teeth are designed to overlap the blade or chipper next to it, while it's the plate that adds to the overall thickness of your stack. 
Many sets come with 1 8 and 1 16th inch chippers. Good sets will come with a 1 32nd inch chipper as well. If yours aren't exactly 1 8 1 16th or 1 32nd, make a note on your chart. You may even scratch labels on the chippers so you can easily tell them apart later. Hopefully your shims have labels on them, but if not, you can measure and label them with a sharpie. Now you'll have a workable chart for quickly choosing the right components for your next setup. You may even add to the chart later, recording which chippers and shims you used for certain setups that you may wish to repeat. One final tip. I've seen folks keep a piece of plywood in which they cut a variety of dado thicknesses in, and then they record the setup that it took to cut each of those dados. They use that as a gauge to select and repeat that setup for future work pieces. It's not a bad idea. Don't forget to check out the links for the resources below. See you next time. Ridge Carbide is the best cut secret in woodworking. I kid you not, their saw blades are second to none, both in quality and performance, and they're less expensive than the other ultra premium brands. Do yourself a favor, use the link and the discount code below this video. You will never go back to cheap blades again. Wait, don't go yet. If you're new here, please subscribe and remember to ring the bell. I would really appreciate that. Give us a thumbs up or better yet, leave us a comment. I always read them. And be sure to check out the latest issue of Stumpy Nubs Woodworking Journal. It's always packed with tips, tricks, and tutorials designed to make you a better woodworker.